John Schmidt recently played straight pool on a live stream for free. He played for many hours a day over the course of four or five days, and it turned into a master class of straight pool. This is just one rack out of dozens that I could have chosen, and I'm sure we'll look at more in the future. But let's see what we can learn from this rack. Welcome to this week's Rack of the Week. Rack starts with a high break ball, and he's a long way away. So this is just a straight high ball with the cue ball. You notice he didn't try to overpower it. He just wanted to get the ball separated and get the cue ball clear. Now his first shot, you know, there's only one shot, and it's this 13 ball along the rail. So I'll ask you, where would you send the cue ball on this shot? And my answer is I would just try to bring the cue ball straight over here. And the reason is you're going to have a choice of three shots, the two ball, the 11, or the one. Now, a more adventurous player might, might try to bring the cue ball this way into the rack, thinking that you could open these up and do a little bit more. But John plays with more precision than that, of course, and he plays more, with more precision than my choice. He sends the cue ball through the window. I kind of like that. I don't think there was a lot of danger there. And then he instantly goes to the two ball, to open up this cluster, you've got two insurance balls, the 11 and the 1. Now, I'm going to pause. You see what John did? As soon as he opened this up, and by the way, once again, he didn't try to blast it. That was just a medium speed with control to keep the cue ball in this area. But the very first thing John did right after this shot was he stood here, and he looked this way. What's he looking at? He's looking at the 10 ball. What does the 10 ball afford him? Obviously, he has two easy shots to choose from, the 1 and the 11. But you need to find ways to progress the rack, and you do that by looking. You're always looking. I talked about this before. If you watch Thorsten Homan play straight pool, you can see his eyes are always moving. They're examining the rack from all different angles. And, and indeed, that's exactly what John's doing. He's already walked around to the other side of the table to see what these balls look like from over there. The benefit of doing that is astounding if you start doing it. It really, really helps you see patterns. So John is going to end up choosing to shoot this 10 ball. And that's something he does very often in the early parts of the rack. When he's nudged a few balls, there might be a couple of balls open below the rack like this, easy shots to choose from. He'll choose a shot above the rack. And that affords him the opportunity to progress the rack. That is, improve the position of the balls to make it easier to run and easier to get into a good end pattern. So he's checked several things and walked completely around the table. He's still considering the 11, but nope, he's going for the 10. Now, what? he's not just pocketing the 10 to get on the 9, which is what I thought. He nudged the 5 over so that the 5 and the 4 both go into this pocket now. That's a, a very uh, obvious example of improving the rack. I call it progressing the rack. Now, I would have been going, at this point, I would have been going aggressively to get at these balls. So I might, have, I might have shot the four ball to get on the nine to nudge these open, you, planning on using the eight ball as a break shot. But I'll tell you what, John shot a three ball sequence. He shot the 10 and then the one and then this 11. And in my opinion, when he walked around the table earlier, he saw that the three ball goes once the one ball's out of the way. So he shot a three ball sequence, 10, one, 11, to get here. That's why I think a lot of players, myself included, might have shot this 11 and played position for the 15 because it's right there. It's real obvious, isn't it? But that doesn't help you improve the rack. So he shot this 11 ball and came two rails up to this position to shoot this three. That's the type of thing. It's, a little, it's seeing deeper into the rack. It's seeing more options, more opportunities. And at this point, he took a look to see what's going to happen with these balls. He knew that he was going to nudge the 12 over and had a shot on the 12, shot on the 15 in the worst case scenario. Now, once again, he just automatically and instinctively goes, brings the cue ball back over here. Short side position. That's another example. He could have shot this ball 
and once again, play position for the 15. The 15's right there. This is one thing I really try to instill in my students in straight pool, and I find it's a hard thing to do. You're not just pocketing balls when you play straight pool. You need to think ahead and progress the rack. You're not improving the situation of the rack at all if you pocket this ball and play position for the 15 because you've done nothing to address the problem areas, this is, which is what this is. John played short side position. That gives him options on these two balls. You can shoot the seven or the nine. I think if the cue ball came shorter, like if it stopped here, he might have shot the seven. But I want you to look at his eyes. What's he looking at? He looked over at these balls. And he knows that the six ball is here as well. So he's planning the entire rack. So what he did here surprises me a little bit because in my opinion, the eight ball is the obvious best break ball. It's not too low. Um, it's a real good, it's in a real good spot. And I, what I see here is shooting the nine and the seven and then coming up above these balls because you can shoot the five, four or four, five. And I, what I'm saying is I think the six ball is a good key ball for the eight ball break shot. Because if you have this angle on the six ball, it's real easy to play a little bit of inside English and come straight down in, in uh, a great position zone for the eight ball. Conversely, you can also have this angle on the six ball. And it's very easy to use low and send the cue ball to the side rail and to that same position for the break ball. That's what I saw, and that's probably what I would have chosen. I find John's choice a little bit surprising because right here, yeah, see, he's taking another look to make sure of what he's doing. Right here, he could have played position on the seven ball and, and, and done the pattern that I just talked about. But in, oh, the, the, the frame advance, that was from the recording. He shot that eight ball and played position for the seven. In other words, uh, a few shots ago, he decided to sh shoot the four ball as his break ball. He's shooting so fast, I can't keep up with him. So he shot the eight and then the seven knowing that he's going to use the four as the break ball. The six ball is an up table ball, so the f that makes the five the key ball to get on the four. And then, so when he had a shot on this 15, I would have sent the cue ball straight up table <laughs> because then you have this angle where you can go two rails to get on your key ball. And he sent the cue ball this way around the five. I thought that was pretty dangerous. He almost hit that five ball, and it could have turned out a lot worse. Uh, conversely, he might have ran straight into the five ball and then been okay. But I thought that was kind of a risky shot, a little bit surprising. But what this does do is I think he's got a better angle on the key ball from here. So he does something smarter than what I, what I said is when you get this angle is that I'd want to go two rails. But that's probably a bad choice because, I, and this has happened to me a lot, I've come two rails and then I don't hit it hard enough and I end up here I'm far away from my cue ball with the wrong angle. So John does something smart and just goes one rail into that zone. And that guarantees, here's your shot line, that guarantees that you're going to be on the correct side of the shot line. And the shot that he's about to shoot, I want to point out because it is a really important straight pull shot. It comes up all the time. And I call it a kill shot. Efren Reyes is famous for this shot. So you can see the angle that he's got to cut this ball. But here's the shot line to the pocket for the four ball. So he wants to say, stay on this side of the shot line for the four ball. So you do, by, you do that by killing the speed of the cue ball. And the five-inch pockets help because you can brush this rail going in. But you can hit it softly, which makes the pocket bigger as well. But you're going to notice that he shoots with a lot of outside English, left spin on that cue ball. So the tangent line of the cue ball into the rail is this way, and the left English is trying to pull the cue ball this way. So those two things fight each other, and they kill the speed of the cue ball. So even though he cut that ball uh, from here, the cue ball is still way on this side of the line. That's a very important uh, uh, positional play to have in your arsenal if you're going to be a straight pool player. And we'll show the, the break shot just because that's what I typically do in my racks of the week. Uh, I think this is a straight high ball. Yeah, the cue ball off the top of the rack. You'll notice that the high English on that cue ball caused the cue ball to curve into this rail, avoid the side pocket strat, scratch, and then come straight back across to avoid scratching in this side pocket. 
But right here is the biggest lesson from this rack. Shooting the 10 ball is what made the rest of the rack able to develop and progress the way it did. He's got an up table ball, a little bit of a cluster in the uh, rack area, an easy shot to choose on the 11 or the 1. But the ability to see a little bit farther in the rack and make the choice to shoot the 10 ball is what made the rest of the rack able to flow the way that it did. And there's probably several different ways to open up that cluster and get on a break shot from there. But shooting the 10 ball was the key.